everything you need to know about products and services that can improve your life. This is Experts on Call on CL 650. He turned the water into wine. <laughs> yes, well, you know, that water wish. damage in the strata, <laughs> <laughs> usually some wine might come with that just to, to take away some of the pain. We're back, and this is Strata Life, part of Experts on Call here on Sea Isle 650. I'm George Gordon. Joining me in studio today, Dan O'Hearn from Key Pacific Property Management. Also joining us, Yang Fei, the Operations Manager at Strata Engineering, and Caleb Donald, the Project Manager at CanStar Restorations. Now, we've been talking about uh, some of the things that you uh, need to do to be prepared for water leaks, uh, damages that are happening in your particular unit, what you can do to shorten up the time to uh, or, or you know take care of some of the problems yourself. Um, there is another possibility that a strata is considering. They say, what about balconies and roofs? Mm -hmm. What if they need replacement? Is it cheaper just to go and get a roofer or contractor to fix them? Or do we really need an engineer? Yang. Yeah. So that's actually a question that we uh, quite frequently get. Mm. Like, what's your value in yeah. this, right? And now my response to that is absolutely the reason why is the long-term costs are going to exceed any amount that you're paying for the engineer. Why? The engineer comes up with the specifications and the design for the roof that's going to be specific to the strata complex. So without an engineer, without the specs and the design, how could you compare? What standards could you compare the work of the contractor to? Right? There is no standards for which the quality of work would be measured. Right? So yeah. there is no measure about that. A lot of times the warranties are void, right? and you cannot really correct it. The cost of corrective work would far exceed that of the initial design and also the due diligence. To go along with that, we won't even rebuild a balcony if we don't have an engineer involved because of the liability involved as well. Yeah. Exactly what you're saying. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And at the second, on the second point, the other reason is because of structural. Mm -hmm. A lot of the envelope ties in with the structural components of the building. Mm -hmm. Any envelope defects that's actually due to um, improper construction practices or a lack of engineering oversight that finally leads to structural defects, the structural defects would not be covered under a standard warranty yeah. because due diligence was not performed to ensure that the proper envelope repair procedures were undertaken. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Yang, you've told me about the reasons why I should do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Get the professional assessment uh, so you can plan a strategy. Now, uh, Caleb, <laughs> what happens when somebody, say George Gordon, decides that he's the expert here, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not bad. We can, we can do a little uh, touch up here and a little paint there. It looks good as new. How much of that does happen and what are the consequences of not doing the proper job what have you seen yeah being in this industry a long time we do get apparently a lot of experts uh, when we go into a, a claim and uh, or water damage first of all when they have an emergency water damage leave the equipment running the longer it's off the longer it stays let the equipment do its job yes it's not always quiet yes it's not always comfortable but the the more it runs the sooner it's out of there and so a lot of people will uh, think that they're helping by maybe ripping up the carpet or they cut some holes in the drywall. Let us do our job. This is what we're trained to do. You have talked to, I, we, not really joking about it, but one of the most common things, I don't want the dehumidifier mm -hmm. running because it's too uh, too noisy. Uh, it costs money. Electricity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. Yeah, my bill's going to go up. <laughs> is, is that uh, a common thing that you run onto is that people don't think beyond what they see? Sure, and a lot of times people need to sleep, so they turn it off at night, I get that. But again, the longer it's off, the longer it stays. We have to dry the structure. I mean, there's no getting around it. Just leave it running, and it's it's like a Band-Aid. Just rip it off real quick, let it run, let the equipment be there for a short amount of time, and it's out of there. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm thinking now we move back to the balconies. I would, is, is it, uh, and I don't understand all the laws, and anybody can answer this, uh, if if the what deems the balcony to be unsafe is it like a time limit that runs up on them that they have to be replaced uh, uh, does a building inspector say oh that's uh, those uh, those things are uh, running out of the lifestyle there, there's there is a danger there what happens with those 
I think it's usually triggered a performance like the, you know, people notice the railing is loose or that the deck surface is worn out. And, right. and, uh, and, you know, if you just want to get a contractor out there to uh, replace uh, um, old for new, um, you can do that. But if it's an older building, you, you, you want to make sure you have compliance. The bylaws might have changed. Mm -hmm. And then when they're fiddling around it, wrapping it into the, the, uh, the envelope, you know, that, that membrane surface, the, the products that, that are available today um, are way superior than what was available 20 years ago. And if you're not consulting with uh, an engineer on that, um, you may be missing out on some of those things. But mm -hmm. uh, not to take anything away from very skilled carpenters. I mean, they're, they're awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think it's, it's a different role. Um, you know, someone designing and engineering is different than, than the person who's doing the construction work. And there's liability yeah. involved as well. Yes, yeah. <coughs> Absolutely. And I would, mm -hmm. and I, I would think uh, that uh, um, if one unit is having a problem with the balcony, that speaks to a bigger problem. Yes, definitely. It could be like that. And actually, Dan brought up a really good point, mm -hmm. and it ties into the point of why we need regular inspections yeah. on these balconies. Yeah. On, in one case for Strata, we inspected balcony. Everything looks fine, but guess what? When we inspected the post, we could stick a pencil through the post yeah. supporting the balcony. Mm. And uh, would these be like, are, are they are some of these older uh, wood or are they metal that uh, are rusted? Uh? It's wood. It's basically those wooden posts. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because the defect actually occurs at the detailing around the post. And yeah. so water is actually getting absorbed by the wood. And so it may not be uh, something that's very obvious to yeah. the common uh, com to the common eye, but rather when you have a professional on site, we know exactly what to look for yeah. so with regards to the balconies. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is is this one of the fallacies that we talk about when people sort of taking the cursory look and just saying, eh, well, or or leaving it to the building manager. What do you think? Building manager mm -hmm. says, well, I don't know. It looks okay to me. Uh, it has to be a, a, a plan in place. Mm -hmm. um, and, and is that, again, is that up to the Strata Council to advise it, a manager? It is, manage? and, I, and, I, and I think some of the issue is, you know, it's everyone lives in a home, and I think what happens is you realize, you, you feel that I live in a home, it's not complicated. You, you probably wouldn't dream about doing your own heart surgery. Um, yeah. Most people <laughs> don't do their own taxes. But when it comes to maintaining uh, your, your home, uh, people figure out, I, I can see it, I can handle it. But systems are more complicated, and and uh, how an engineer or how a property manager or how a contractor is going to look at something is going to be very different than a homeowner because we see it in a very different light all Absolutely. the time. And uh, and there's always a reluctance to have people out and do those inspections. Again, it boils down to cost and timing, and, mm -hmm. and maybe maybe an ignorance on on the true need. Right. Mm -hmm. So in other words, ignore it, and it, it'll go away. <laughs> if you don't know about it, everything <laughs> everything is straight. Yeah. Well, let's. Let's look at the level of preparedness for improving stratas. Are the strata holders doing a better job? Are the, the management companies like uh, uh, Key West are obviously advising their people, but overall in this city, are we doing a better job of identifying problems, planning to deal for them, having, you know, having the, the preparedness to deal for something? In my experience on the, on the different stratas that I deal with, and Key Pacific is, is one of them, it is getting better. Um, there is always room for improvement, but at the same time, they, they're only as, as good as the information they're given. And so they go through um, as much as they can you, by getting depreciation, re depreciation reports done, assessments done. Um, you know, they can only do so much as well. But, yeah, I, I do believe it's getting better, but it's, it's, they're as good as their property manager. So oh, it falls back on, uh, yeah, on guys yeah. like you, Dan. Well, and 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 uh, I was just thinking as you're saying that, I was thinking about emergency preparedness. Uh, are we really prepared? Because we've talked about this in the past as well, and and I think you know um, we're we're doing very very little um, other than what's legislated. I think most strata corporations That's make sure that their exit lights are working and and that sort of <laughs> thing. And, but you know, not every elevator has has proper emergency protocols in place or or, or phones uh, in place and. You know, do we really know where the elderly people live and, and uh, um, whether there's pets and are the doorknobs uh, accessible to people with arthritis? I mean, it, you can go on and on and on of, of emergency preparedness, and I think That's no true. one is really taking it to the level that ought to be. We have mm -hmm. committees for it's landscaping. True. We have committees yep. for bylaws. We need committees perhaps for emergency preparedness mm -hmm. as well. Great, Absolutely. Great advice. Well, let's talk about um, how the information flows in an emergency situation. Uh, I've had a problem in my unit. Um, I'm with my parents-in-law, 
for a while, and I want to get home as soon as possible. Who, where does the flow of information start, and how does it how does it come down? Who tells who what? I don't know. Caleb's guy's relying on that information yeah. the most. Yeah. Well, in a sense, I do rely on my yeah. staff, but when I can get my updates, I try to always get emails. Emails out to everybody involved. So the property manager has to be involved. Uh, obviously, the, the unit owners, they maybe have renters in there. And there's a, sometimes there's a lot of different people involved, but not just the property manager, but maybe they have insurance now. So there's the renter's insurance for their contents. There's the owner's insurance um, for, for their, the, owning their building. And there's the, the building's insurance adjuster. So there's a lot of people involved. And the more uh, updates they have, the better. So that way they don't have to be there finding out exactly what's wrong or I don't get 15 phone calls in an hour. So it's better to keep them updated to keep everybody happy that way. And, and the flow goes a lot smoother that way. Yeah, the, Absolutely. The, the, certainly been an example in many corporate uh, uh, crises that the more information that was, that was out there, like we don't have an answer for you today on this, but we think we'll have something for you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You should plan on staying with your parents-in-law for another uh, <laughs> three weeks. Three, three times the time you think it should be. Well, yeah. it's, a, it's a great rule of thumb and very scary because yes. it's, a, it's a lot of emotional baggage that's, uh, that's involved with there. And it's, yes. and it's also important to make sure that all this information gets documented. That's very, very important mm -hmm. in Estrada. And that's something which actually the property manager in a lot of cases, that's what's that's who's gonna help you ensure that all these gets documented properly as well. So, so if you're dealing with claims or if you're dealing with uh, responsibility or even liability, then mm -hmm. Absolutely. you know exactly where you stand. Even the defects and any inspections, any reports, everything should be documented, so. Well, all things Strata Life is what we're talking about right here on CL 650, and we are uh, going to be back in a moment with Dan O'Hearn from Key Pacific Property Management, Yang Fei from uh, Strata Engineering, and Caleb Donald from CanStar Restorations. We'll be going to the mailbag, talk about some of the issues that people have had, questions you might have, and let's see what we can answer or where we can send you to get those answers. Like, for example, questions at Strata Life, at strata.life. This is George Gordon. This is CL 650. There's still more ahead with experts on call on CL 650.